Okay, we have one more library here to have a look at. Actually, we're going to do two libraries in one because Frank sent me two libraries, one called Storm Lake and one of the Thunderstorm, I think Thunderstorm 4. Uh, so let's try and do both together so that we can sort of see how to tackle that. Instead of one by one, we could say, let's see what happens if we drop a couple libraries in. So I'll go back to SoundMiner, I have an empty database. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to basically take these two libraries, Storm Lake HD Pro and Thunderstorm 4 HD Pro, and I'm going to just drop them into SoundMiner. And we don't have a ton of files, but we have 65 files. And this is, again, the metadata that's coming in. This is as Frank supplies it. These are the file names that he has. I can see already that he's got sort of a category at the beginning here, which will help us when we want to assign our categories. Then a good description, right? And then the microphone and at the end, uh, the microphone pattern. So ORTF based on these, or this looks like a recorder, PCM D100 from Sony. So we have this, and we want to probably preserve this. Now, in this case, I know for a fact that he's actually already put this information under um, microphone. But we see that in this case, in the Storm Lake library, actually the end is a little different. And here he's using, basically creating a unique ID for these files. So it's a numbering scheme, right? Storm Lake underscore 106, 07, 08, et cetera. So I know that when I go to break this out, I have these sort of different pieces of information I'm going to have to sort of deal with probably slightly separately or figure out what I want to do. So we have a copyright notice again under notes. We can leave that. That's fine. Uh, the libraries are set. So if I wanted to, when it goes to create the file name later, we could probably truncate these. Uh, the designer is here, and the manufacturer is Creative Sound Design LLC. So when we go to build our file names, we have probably a choice to figure out. And this would be Frank's choice. Obviously, I'm going to make some decisions, but this would be his choice ultimately of what to include. Um, I know that he sells sounds from the website The Recordist, so and that's what people probably know of him more as instead of Creative Sound Design LLC or Frank Bree. So I might choose to put The Recordist somewhere in here, right? Um, and again, I, I'm going to show you my sort of solution to this. Frank will ultimately have a different opinion and you know can do his library as exactly as he wants, but I'll go through it as if I was Frank, and this would be what I would probably do. So first thing is first, we have sort of a category and subcategory. I'm going to sort of make changes to these, so I'm going to select the water waves. We're going to assign these down here to water wave. Pretty much the same thing, but slightly different. And when I do that, it assigns category, subcategory, category full. And down here we have basically thunderclaps. So again, assign these to weather, thunder. Pretty much the same thing, but it's just formatted a little differently in the UCS system. So great, here we go. Next question I would have is, you know, do I want to assign a vendor category? I wouldn't probably in this case for the pure reason that we have already the categories pretty clear. Thunder, right? And uh, water waves. So what additional sort of vendor category do we need for these? We probably don't. You could consider something like trying to fish out a word out of here, like lightning, heavy, crack. But, I, you know, these are more descriptive terms than actually vendor categories. So I think we don't need to use a vendor category for this actually. We have an effects name here, and it has the words water and thunder at the beginning. I might decide that maybe that's a little redundant because we have the category here that's already telling us that it's thunder. So let's just say I wanted to come in here and remove those. Easy to do here in the workflow with a couple of find and replaces. So in the effects name, let's go ahead and find the word. Let me scroll up a little bit. Let's take the word water space off of the beginning, and let's also duplicate this and take the word thunder space off the beginning. I don't think we need it. Um, and again, from my personal preference, I'm going to uppercase the effects name at the same time. So you can see in one fell swoop, when I run this, basically, I've removed that and I've uppercased it. And so here's my effects name, right? I'm perfectly fine with that for the effects name. I'm going to come back here and take under manufacturer and change. And actually, there's an easier way to do this. I don't even need to do a find and replace. I can just do a set field. So let's just come down here to set field, set the manufacturer to the recordist. Now, Frank may not want to use this, but I'm going to use this because to me, I think that's what I think most people probably know him as. So, um, and because I just prefer it, I'm going to just go in here and just type none for the show. Doesn't matter. You could leave this blank. He probably would choose to, but again, that's just me. So the notes we can leave as is. It's copyright notice, which he probably wants to keep. And we come here to library. And my only other question would be, you know, this library looks pretty good. I think this is exactly how he wants to see it in the metadata. So 
there we go. We're pretty much ready to look at building a file name for these. The other thing to consider here is that is this final chunk. So he's got microphone and different things listed. Now I noticed that there's basically we're lucky right now in that each of these is two terms, right, with a separated by a space. So if we want to preserve that, there's a couple ways we could do it. But if I look up here at the end of these file names, he's got uh, Stormlake 01-10. So that's not a microphone, that's something else. But we could also potentially preserve that if we wanted to. So um, let's just say for the purpose of it, let me call up the field called user comments. And then let me call up the mic one called microphone. Now, I think Frank has already embedded this information here in their microphone. So, so in this case, let's say we want to just preserve this really easily, this, uh, this, these final two words. And also this, let's say he really wants this numbering scheme at the end of these in the user data. That's fine. Well, the first thing I would do is to get rid of this underscore because I want them to be consistent. So we see two terms here separated by an underscore, but here we have two terms separated by a space. So I'm going to simply really quickly come to a find and replace in the file name, and I'm going to change the underscore to a space. That'll basically break this apart into spaces. Okay. So now I have, I know at the very end of each file name, two terms that I want to preserve. So what can we do? Well, we have this user comment. So let's say we want to break it out and store it there. And the reason we want to store it is we're going to overwrite these file names building an entirely new one. We don't want to lose this. So there's a workflow called take words. And there are two variants, take first words and take last words. If I go to take last words and I say take the last two words from the file name and paste it into the user comments, right? Basically, I've now preserved very quickly that piece of information. Now, he already has this in microphone. Right? So maybe when I build the file name, I actually want to somehow use this um, and do some abbreviations, things like that, which let's say we want to do that. But I did preserve this really quickly. Now, if I wanted to, if there was some reason to preserve this, I'm not sure that there is. I think we're more likely to want to use the microphone. It seems like he likes to use that at the end of his file name. So let's figure out how to do that. So let's start to build the file name. Again, I've preserved this under user comments. I could blow this away later if I don't want it. For now, I'm just going to hide it. I don't particularly need it. But I just wanted to show you how you could pull that piece out using the workflow. Okay, so here we are back with the empty workflow. And we're going to start to build the file names exactly as we want them. And again, I'm holding this over here to the microphone as is because uh, we want to potentially use that. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just start the build process. So we're going to use the vendor category. No, we don't need it, right? We decided we weren't going to use it. User category and vendor category are empty here. So I'm going to take the file name and we're going to title case it back because I uppercased it. We don't want that probably, so we'll put that back title cased. Creator ID, I'm going to take the manufacturer, in this case, the recordist. Okay. And this, the source ID, I'm going to take library, which is right here. Okay, well, I think we're ready to test this out now. Uh, we have our categories, we have our effects name, we have our manufacturer, we have library names, we have our microphone data over here that we're going to append. So um, put this back to microphone. And the source ID will be library, and the creator will be manufacturer. So I think this is set up now. We're going to take the effects name. We're going to title case it, so take it from uppercase down, and um, put it into the uh, file name. We'll be bold. We'll go right to the file name and see what happens. So we select everything and hit run. And interestingly, it skipped these first files. It didn't actually do them for some reason. So let me undo for a second just to revert these back just so that we kind of preserve where we were and let's figure out what's going on so uh, everything looks okay here certainly the build shouldn't have any problem there but i see something that i think must be the reason and that is this see how under microphone it says m slash s well we're telling it to take that and build it into the file name well i know that that slash is not allowed in the file name so um this script seems to basically not like that and it seems to skip that because it gets to that point, tries to paste into the file name, the file name, the file system probably reports back, nope, can't do that. Or SoundMiner has its own rules that say you can't. So uh, relatively easy to fix. What we're going to do is uh, insert a new workflow above this and we're just going to do a find and replace. And we're going to put it above because we need to do it before we build. We're going to come to microphone here. And I'm going to find M slash S and replace it with MS, which is what we're going to have to live with if we want it to be in the file name. Okay. Um, and so now let's run them and see what happens, see if these will actually 
run. Ah, now they do. Good. Okay. Now, I immediately see that I've created a pretty ridiculously long file name. And so let's look at what's going on. And I see this big chunk in the middle here. And I realize, okay, right. Earlier, I took the file name as we had it. I'm going to undo. And I copied it to the effects name. And so what I don't see here, because my view is a bit sort of narrow, is that the effects name is actually a lot longer than I thought it was. It sure is. And it has the microphone in the effects name as well, and it has this numbering scheme in the effects name. Of course it does, because we copied it from the file name, and I didn't remove it. So let's put these into bypass for a second here, and let's come in here and go and fix that. So I want to remove these last two terms from the effects name. And so the easiest way to do that is to use this uh, remove words, remove two words from the back of the effects name. But one issue I know already is it's going to see this underscore and think this is one word and the word storm is one word. And I don't want to remove that. I want to remove these two. These two are going to remove fine because there's a space already. So easy to do to come here and say find and replace in the effects name. Replace the underscore with a space. That will basically break this apart so that it sees these as two words so that this next workflow, remove words, will remove those. So I'm pretty confident this is going to work. So I'd run this. And there you go, it removes those. So now my effects name is pretty much as I want it. It's still long, but um, it's fine. We could truncate it somehow later if we wanted to or different things we could do. But this came from the file name originally, so this was in the file name, so I'm fine putting it back into the file name, okay? So now we see, of course, is that I have these long terms like the recordist and the library, the long thing, and this long microphone. So before we run the final time, let's do some find and replaces to basically truncate some things. Again, at some point, if Frank chooses a abbreviation for his manufacturer uh, and it's built into the lookup table, which will probably happen at some point, that will happen automatically, the truncation of the recordist to that. But we don't know for sure what he's going to pick. So I'm going to just start here and say the recordist in the file name changed to this, or let's do this like that, the recordist, T-Rec. Okay, so now after it builds this file name and it's going to put the recordist in there, it's going to reduce that truncated. So let's look at the libraries. Also, I'm going to right click on this and duplicate it. Let's just duplicate it twice because we have two different libraries and take Storm Lake HD Pro. Now in the original file name, it looks like he had used, uh, you can see STLK and then 01, 05 or whatever. So let's just say we want to make that STLK for Storm Lake. And then let's come over here and say, okay, we have Thunderstorm 4 HD Pro and let's say Thunderstorm 4. Now, again, Frank will choose something else that he wants if he even wants to. He could just leave the library out of the file name if he really didn't want to, if it gets unbearably long for him or whatever. But in our case, let's do that. I know this is going to take this microphone field in its entirety. It's going to correct the MS, but it's going to paste everything. Now, in his original file names, he didn't actually preserve the word Sheps or Sony or Sennheiser. Um, so he so let's assume that he doesn't want that. So again, three quick find and replaces here should fix this. So in the file name here, take Sheps. And at this point, I'll take Sheps space and remove it. Duplicate this again and tab down to it. Remove Sennheiser space. And one last time, duplicate it and remove Sony space. So real quickly, again, before I hit run and see what it does, it's going to correct the MS issue, right, that's here. It's going to build the file name, title case in the effects, manufacturer library microphone. It's going to actually then put it in the file name. And then it's going to do basically six different find and replaces that will basically truncate different things. Now, the nice thing is if, if this worked and Frank liked it, he could simply save this as. And as he moved on to his next library, he just have to come in here and make a change to this to find and replace the name of that library. He could bypass the second one. He's probably not going to use it. This might still be useful if he's got other files that have information similar to this and he wants to. Again, he can easily now modify this workflow if he saved it to basically work the next time around. So let me unbypass this. Let's run this and see what happens now. Let's close the workflow. And here we go. We now have basically a fully UCS compliant library for Frank with these two libraries. Water Wave, Waves Lake Beach Close-Up Storm, T-Rec for the recordist, Storm Lake, and the microphone sort of at the end. MS has been fixed. 
Um, and again, and so now we have these file names as is. Now, if an end user really didn't like these file names, they could simply go into the workflow and they could basically build a new file name, sort of using field build and different functions. And I did give an example of that in the other uh, file name structure part two video or in the uh, playlist introduction to UCS. There's a video called file name structure part two. And I mentioned in there sort of how somebody could take this file name because it's well structured, even if they hated it, and build a new file name for themselves. So real quick, let me just give you a quick example of that. I'm gonna go ahead and embed this just to save it where we were. But let's say you're the end user and this is now what you're delivered. So you've got this file name that matches the UCS system and you have all these fields of metadata and all this stuff. But let's say you really hate this file name and you don't wanna work with it. Again, if you don't have an interest in renaming the file name, you could stop this video now. But let me just show you real quick again how simple it is for somebody to basically take and work with this in a different way. So, so for me, the easiest way to do this would be probably to just field build an entirely new file name. We have all these fields available to us. So let's just pull up field build and start to see what we could do with it. So let's say I'm gonna build a new file name and let's say I wanna start, I'm just gonna remove all this basically. I wanna start with the category. So I just wanna take the category, water or weather. Eh, actually, let's say I wanna use the subcategory because that's probably a little more descriptive actually. So subcategory, right? I'm gonna put a space dash space. And then I'm going to take the effects name, right? And then I'm going to put uh, space dash space, and then I'm going to put manufacturer. Okay, I'm going to put this up to 150 characters. I need to have an end sign there. And so this will build basically a very different file name using these fields. I'll do a quick test on one of them. Just hit run. And there you go. Now I see that I probably want to retitle case this. So let's do that. So. Let's just do a quick change of case before I do that to come back to the effects name. Well, actually, I don't, let's say I don't want to change the effects name here, but I do want to change it for the file name. Well, there's an easy way to do this, and that's to do this. We can say copy the field effects name to temporary one. So these temporary fields, as we mentioned, are places for you to store temporary information. Then I can change the case title case, temporary one. And now instead of effects name here, I'll basically say use what's in temporary one, right? And that will have the effect of using the title case version without us actually changing the effects name over here. So if I run this, right, you see how quickly I've basically taken and created my own file name structure if this is what I chose. Um, based on, again, the information that came to us in the file name structure as delivered and the metadata that was here. So very easily, I've gone ahead and created a whole new file name structure if that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to undo that because I want to preserve these as I had them. And that's it. So that's the last of the demos of taking some libraries from beginning to end using this sort of methodology. I think you can see the power here that's available to you in these workflows um, just creating some simple logic sort of rules and sequences, you can basically re-sculpt almost everything. And um, so there we go. I hope this was useful, and uh, we'll wrap it up real quickly in the next video.